Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to another Seth Say So video. I hope you're all well. This is a requested video, so thank you so much for the request. And as the title suggests, we're going to be talking about the British singer-songwriter, record producer, musician, and one of the UK's queens of lovers rock, and that is Miss Karen Wheeler. But before we get into this video, a very, very quick disclaimer. As usual, this video is purely done for entertainment, informational and commentary purposes. It's not to mock anyone. It's not to disrespect anyone. It's purely various information I found on the interwebs put together into one easy to digest video. So as always, we're going to keep it cute. We're going to keep it polite. We're going to keep it respectful. And let's get into the video. Karen Wheeler was born in London, England to Jamaican parents on the 19th of January 1963 and was briefly raised in Jamaica according to Wikipedia. According to the website canalstreet.co.uk, Karen's mother was a singer with a Jamaican drama company and her father was a bass player. However, according to her interview in the August-September 2012 issue of the Soul Survivors magazine, Karen spoke about her early years and upbringing and said, To be honest, my life's been a real triangle of cultures as I was raised by a white family and given up for adoption really young. My black family has been in and out of my life and it's been a cross-cultural upbringing. Growing up in a mixed race culture without being a mixed race child was kind of nuts but you get to understand most cultures especially with the traveling I've done. When I was 9 or 10 I learned about the middle passage and the slave trade and was livid with white people. That sounds wrong but as a 10 year old you try to process that and take it in. I got very angry and got into a rebel kick. Then my white mum got TB and had to go into hospital so I went to live with my black mum. A lot of stuff has gone on over the years and I was bouncing back and forth. It's been good, bad and ugly. I'm grateful though for the bicultural British and Jamaican experience fully in both respects. Whilst Karen was in high school, she and childhood friend Pauline Catlin began performing together for fun. However, after becoming inspired by a female group such as the Shirelles and the Ronettes, the pair began performing together professionally. Eventually, in 1976, Karen and Pauline entered and won a singing competition at the Barley High nightclub in London. The ladies then added Carol Sims, who would later be known as Kofi, and formed the British reggae lovers rock group Brown Sugar that same year. Speaking with the Soul Survivors magazine in 2012, Karen Wiener went into a little more detail as to how Brown Sugar came about. She said, one of my friends, Pauline Catlin, from my South London school, Kingsdale, basically heard me singing something in the hallway and suggested forming a group. We had a little sing-off and liked each other's voices and needed a third person so that we could at least do three-part harmonies. At one point, there were four members in the band, but Lathan Lawrence left. We all wrote and arranged harmony content quite early as a group and were between the ages 12 and 14, me being the youngest, and people really checked for us. Our first single as Brown Sugar was as backing vocalist for a song called Jealousy by T.T. Ross. The group signed to Dennis Harris's Lovers Rock label and in 1977 they released their debut single I'm In Love With The Dreadlocks, Dreadlocks which became a massive hit and went on to reach the top spot on the British reggae charts. Their self-titled album was scheduled to be released that same year. However, according to Wikipedia, the album was shelved after the group disbanded due to the mistreatment by their recording label Lovers Rock. However, Karen did reunite with Brown Sugar in 1978, according to Wikipedia, and embarked on a tour with the late Jamaican reggae singer Dennis Brown. In her interview with the Soul Survivors magazine, Karen went into detail about how Dennis took her under his wing. She said, We opened for Dennis Brown when he had his big hit, Money In My Pocket, as we had enough community hits to be recognised. He then took me under his wing as he liked my vibe, and I was totally blown away. At one point in Jamaica around 1980, I was in a friend's house hanging out and although I didn't smoke anything, unbeknown to me, my friend had a bag of weed. I was actually protesting their innocence when the place got raided and the police were gonna shoot me. All I know is they gave us three seconds to give it up and I was panicking, thinking, okay. And all of a sudden, Dennis Brown just bust through the door like Rambo. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe he checked for me like that. The police were in awe because it was Dennis Brown and dropped their M16 guns down quick time. Dennis basically warned me not to hang with these people and said he'll look after me. He was a constant shadow in my life. He's always had my back. I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for him. Following the tour, the group released the following singles. Our Reggae Music. To tell you about our reggae music. Confession Hurts. Your confession hurts. Dreaming of Zion. Dreaming of Zion. And I'm so proud. I'm so proud. However, after the release of their final single, Go Now, Go, Go, Now, Now, in 1983, the group disbanded in order to pursue their solo careers. According to an article in November 2018 on roughtrade.com, the reason the group had split up 
was because the group's success stopped after the release of their debut single and with no album release and no industry support, the group broke up in the early 80s. In 1982, Karen Wheeler met English backing vocalist Claudia Fontaine from London and together they formed the duo Aphrodisiac. The duo best known for performing backing vocals on English mod revival punk rock band The Jam's final single Beat Surrender in 1982. The duo also performed backing vocals for Elvis Costello's 1983 album Punch the Clock, in particular the international hit Every Day I Write a Book. The duo later added a third member Naomi Thompson and went on to sing for acts such as English synth pop group Heaven 17 on their 1984 album How Men Are and also performed backing vocals on the specials hit single Free Nelson Mandela as well as performing on English group Madness on their albums Keep Moving and Mad Not Mad. They also appeared in the video for Madness's single Sweetest Girl. In 1985 Aphrodisiac performed backing vocals on the first two songs on Welsh singer-songwriter Howard Jones's second album Dream Into Action. Due to the success of the two songs the trio went on tour as part of Jones's band. The group continued to perform backing vocals for acts such as Japan, Aswood, Sam Brown and Maxi Priest to name a few. In her interview with the Soul Survivors magazine, Karen spoke about her time with Aphrodisiac. She said, I loved it and I liked the way Elvis wrote. It taught me about pop music hooks, content, energy and melodies of its songs. It was good fun and they liked the soulfulness that we brought and enhanced on their records. I missed an opportunity to work with Phil Collins and earn 20 grand a month, which I should have done age 22. I did stuff with Erasure and Chris Ray and enjoyed it all, but I was becoming tired having done a few tours with Howard Jones and others. I became consumed with music and I get migraines and bad dreams if I'm away from it. At one point I stopped singing for six months, didn't write or sing anything and was gonna give up. Things had been kinda tough. People were asking me to sing and I didn't wanna do it or no longer had the belief in myself either. Then in 1988, Karen Wheeler left the group. As I've previously done an in-depth video on Soul to Soul, if you haven't already, please do check it out. I'll be focusing this part on Karen Wheeler only. Karen Wheeler joined Soul to Soul in 1988 after being asked by Jazzy B to become one of the founding members of the group. In an interview with OKPlayer.com around 2014, Karen explained how she joined the group. She said, A girl from mine was working with Pink Floyd as a session singer. She called me and told me she couldn't make the session for that evening. She told me she was going to be gone for two months and asked me if I could take her place. I was working on vocal arrangements and writing songs. Jamie Morgan recorded me on a song and I can't even remember what I was arranging or what song I was working on because we were working on a bunch of different songs. Jazzy had some vocals I laid down and he decided that he wanted to meet me. He really liked the way my voice sounded and the way I was arranging the songs for Jamie so I met him. When I heard the first bits of the album he had I wasn't impressed to be honest but I thought his ideas were really good and the whole sound system thing was something I grew up with. For me it was a part of my culture as an English black woman. It turned into a working relationship. He asked me could you sing on this and could you sing on that? I told him I might be able to but I need to get paid. I met Jazzy B back in 1988, probably some of you weren't born yet but anyway that's not the point. The point is that he heard my voice on a session I'd done for a friend of his called Jamie Morgan and really liked what he heard and he said who's that woman singing behind you? She sounds great, I want to book her, right? So basically that means he wanted to hire me for a session. So I went and did a session for him, he really liked what I did on the session. I made an arrangement up of my vocals and background vocals and stuff for a song called Feel Free. And um, sung by Doreen Waddell, she was one of the featured vocalists on that record. And um, the record was Keep On Moving, otherwise known as Club Classics Volume 1 in the UK by Soul to Soul, our first album. And uh, basically they decided from that session that he wanted to book me to do some lead work. So he said, well, would you like to do a single for our album? We're doing a collection of music for our sound system, which is called Soul to Soul. Would you like to be on that record? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? In the same year, the group released their debut album, Club Classics Volume 1, which included the hit singles Keep On Moving and Back to Life, where Karen Wheeler sang lead vocals. This catapulted the group to international stardom and winning numerous awards, including two Grammy Awards. In her interview with The Soul Survivors magazine in 2012, Karen revealed how she almost died on the way to the Grammys. She said, the funny part is, on the way to the Grammys, I nearly died as our plane was plummeting. I bargained with God. After putting me through all this, let me at least win something, lol. It was serious as everybody was throwing up on the plane. One of the air hostesses got knocked out cold when something fell out and hit her. And I never vomited flying before that day. So again, I feel very honoured. In her interview with the Soul Survivors magazine in 2012, Carrie Wheeler expressed how she really felt about Soul to Soul not receiving a Brit award for either of their hit singles and at the height of their career. She said, 
I felt so to so blew up England and everybody but us got Brit Awards and yeah, I was pissed off lol. We did all the work but didn't get the accolades. When Been Around the World by Lisa Stansfield got her Brit Award, we deserved one too regardless of the category. We could do it. In fact, we did it already and helped her with the idea of those kind of flavours with the whole lower ground beats of Back to Life and Keep On Moving but never got any respect for it at the time. In her interview with BritsAcrossThePond.com in 2013, it was revealed that the slower tempo on the group's hit single Keep on moving was Karen's suggestion and she reworked the disco track into a mellower arrangement. She said, I wanted to make it so people could remember it. Keep it simple and keep it pure to bring people up. They presented me with this song that was kind of an upbeat song and it had the words keep on moving in it but it was really kind of disco housey and I thought this is a bit too quick for me. I don't know if I want it to be this fast. So I sat down with um, Simon Law who was a keyboard player and arranger, writer on the song and um, we and him sat down and we, I said, look, Simon, we need to slow this down. Give me some cool chords. And he gave me some cool chords and I'd had this melody idea and some stuff to go with it to make the arrangement a bit more calm. And uh, Keep On Moving was born. Karen explained in her interview with the Soul Survivors magazine what happened when she represented the reworked version of Keep On Moving to Jazzy, how she felt and what she was going through at the time. She said, he was like, whoa, f***ing love it and all that but in my grief for my child who didn't die but almost did I was spiritually killing myself I was holding my head down and not being my bubbly self and although the song gave me a release I felt I didn't deserve to gain anything from it like my publishing I suffered because of it but I wasn't in my right mind the only right part was writing the song and that's a gift I was given spiritually that song was life-changing which turned into a monster hit and had I known that would happen I'd have got my publishing lol in her interview with Brits Across the Pond in 2013 Karen expressed how she she was glad that Americans connected deeply with Soul to Soul's music. She said, I'm just glad they did. I was surprised that Keep On Moving set it off like that. New Jack Swing was big at the time and it was a lot slower than anything else that was going on in America. In the same interview, Karen debunked the speculation that her and Jazzy B were a couple. Apparently, this was a rumour that was circulating in the American press at the time. She said, there wasn't anything going on. We're like twins, both born the same year, in the same month, both Capricorns. Also in 1988, Karen Reader sang backing vocals in the Erasure song, Chains of Love. In the same year, as mentioned in my Loose Ends video, if you haven't watched it, please do check it out. Karen helped finish the Loose Ends single, Mr. Bachelor, due to Jane allegedly being reluctant to sing at the time. Karen Wheeler continued to perform and tour with Soul to Soul throughout 1989, but then left the group to begin recording her solo album. According to her interview on BritsAcrossThePond.com, not long after the height of Soul to Soul success, Karen left the UK spotlight and moved to the US. She said, I've been coming back and forth to the States since I was about 19. I was so in love with Motown artists and for me, I just wanted to go to America because they've been doing it the longest. I just felt I want to be like them. It made no sense staying in England. In the same interview, it was noted that despite rising the wave of success from hits like Back to Life and Keep On Moving, Karen Wheeler was going through a tough time in her personal life and wanted to get away. In early 1990, Karen Wheeler secured a recording contract with RCA slash EMI Records. Then in May 1990, Karen Wheeler released her debut album, UK Black. The album peaked at number 133 on the Billboard 200, number 30 on the Billboard R&B Albums Chart, and number 14 on the UK Albums Chart in October 1990, spending a total of five weeks on the chart. The album's lead single, Living in the Light, Peaked at number 14 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of six weeks on the chart. The single did amazingly well in the US, peaking at number 53 on the Billboard Hot 100, number 3 on the Billboard Hot R&B singles chart, spending a total of 17 weeks on the chart. The single peaked at number 1 on the Billboard Hot Dance Music Club Play charts, spending a total of one week at the number 1 spot. The single also peaked at number 1 on the Billboard Hot Dance Music Maxi Single Sales chart. The single also did well internationally, peaking at number 26 in the Netherlands, peaking at number 31 in Belgium, number 43 in New Zealand and number 46 in Germany. Speaking on her album UK Black with BritsAcrossThePond.com, although the album produced one of Karen's biggest solo singles, Living in the Light, it didn't do as well as she hoped. She said, It wasn't a big success because the record company didn't know what they were doing. I was supposed to sign to Warner Brothers with Benny Medina, but EMI took over the deal. They didn't know what to do with me, but Benny did, and I was so gutted. EMI was trying to go after what they thought would be the next big thing. Karen Wheeler then released her follow-up single, UK Black. <laughs> 
which peaks at number 40 on the UK singles chart, spent a total four weeks on the chart. Over in the US, the single peaks at number 44 on the Billboard Hot R&B singles chart, spent a total of 11 weeks on the chart. The single also peaks at number 15 in the Netherlands, spending a total of nine weeks on the chart. In her interview with the Soul Survivors magazine, Karen Wheeler explained the meaning behind the single and the album UK Black. She said, as a UK black person, I wrote UK black, feeling like you are of the UK, but the UK don't want you there. If we were treated as equal UK citizens, I wouldn't have to put black in the title. UK black was us saying, stop ignoring us and saying we're not supposed to be here. We helped to rebuild Britain and you got quintessential wealth from us. The album may not have been a success, the most funkiest or soulful, but it was important for me to say and get that off my chest in that track. Karen Wheeler then released her third single, Blue is the Colour of Pain. However, the single missed the UK singles chart, but over in the US, the single peaked at number 37 on the Billboard Hot R&B singles chart, spending a total of nine weeks on the chart. Then in early 1991, Karen Wheeler released what would be the last single from the album, Don't Quit. Quit. which peaked at number 53 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of four weeks on the chart. The single did not chart in the US. In 1992, Karen returned to the studio to begin recording her upcoming album. She also recorded her lead vocals on the song Take Me Higher, which was featured on Soul to Soul's Volume 3 Just Right album. Then in October 1992, Karen was featured on the soundtrack to the film More Money with the track I Adore You. Which peaks at number 59 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. The single did much better in the US, peaking at number 12 on the Billboard Hot R&B singles chart, spent a total of 17 weeks on the chart. In the same year, Karen released her second album, Beach of the War Goddess, which included the single I Adore You. Beach of the War Goddess unfortunately missed the UK albums chart. However, the album peaked at number 81 on the Billboard R&B albums chart. In 1993, Karen Wheeler then released the single Beach of the War Goddess. <laughs> which peaked at number 75 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of one week on the chart. The single did not enter the Billboard charts at all. In the same year, Karen released another single from the album, In Our Love. However, the single did not enter the singles chart in the UK, but the album did peak at number 61 on the Billboard Hot R&B singles chart, spent a total of seven weeks on the chart. Karen Wheeler then released what would be the last single from the album, Soul Street. Soul Street. Soul Street. However, the single did not enter the charts at all. In 1993, Karen Wheeler was asked to rejoin Soul to Soul for the recording of their fourth album, Volume 4, Believe. However, during recording sessions, Karen Wheeler and Jazzy B struggled with creative differences. According to Wikipedia, it is alleged that Karen felt that the group should have been producing more contemporary songs and not just replicating the old sound. According to Karen's interview with BritsAcrossThePond.com in 2013, Karen and Jazzy B had fierce disagreements and the pair stopped speaking for over a decade. Even though Karen left the group, they retained the songs she had co-written, but had other vocalists record over Karen's lead vocals, except from two songs, Ride On and Sunday, where Karen's lead vocals were still present. Also, Karen was supposed to appear as the lead vocalist on the single Love Enough. However, she opted not to finish the song and instead fellow Soul to Soul member Penny Ford sang lead vocals, whilst Karen only performed backing vocals on the song. In 1994, Karen made the move to Los Angeles, sponsored by EMI Records. According to her interview with BritsAcrossThePond.com, she said, I lived there for a year. I rented a fabulous house and about six weeks later the Rodney King incident happened and then the riots. They had the National Guard at the end of my street, which I'd never experienced before. There was an 8pm curfew. All this craziness was going on. I thought, what have I done? I really felt my American dream crashing. Then 1995, Karen was featured on the cover version of Just the Two of Us as a duet with Japanese singer-songwriter Toshinobu Toshi Kubota. which piece at number 30 on Japan's Oricon singles chart. In 1996, Karen was featured on the remix version of the Soul to Soul hit single Keep On Moving, which piece at number 31 on the UK singles chart. In 1997, Karen Wheeler provided guest vocals for Swedish singer-songwriter Eric Gad for the song You're Mine from his album The Right Way. And in 1998, Karen Wheeler and Soul to Soul were featured on the soundtrack to the film How Stella Got Her Groove Back. Then in 1999, Karen released the single Star, which featured the late rapper Biz Marquis. Like oh, 
The single did not enter the charts in the UK. However, the single peaked at number 82 on the Billboard Hot R&B Singles Chart, spending a total of four weeks on the chart. In 2001, Cameron recorded the song Open with American producer, DJ and rapper Pete Rock on the American hip hop production team, the Beat Miners album, Brace for Impact. Then in 2003, Karen performed the track Another Star for the Stevie Wonder tribute album, Conception, an interpretation of Stevie Wonder's songs. There might be another star. In the same year, Karen was featured on the song Lonely for Richard X's album, Richard X Presents His X Factor, Volume 1. In 2004, Karen Wheeler gave birth to her daughter, Asha Starr. And in 2006, Karen Wheeler released her live album, Live at Duo Music Exchange. According to Wikipedia, the album was recorded in Japan and features live performances as well as songs Karen Wheeler recorded during her time with Soul to Soul. In 2007, Karen Wheeler reunited with Soul to Soul and the group soon began performing at local nightclubs and music festivals. In her interview with the Soul Survivors magazine in 2012, Karen revealed that it was her manager who insisted that they get back together. She said, Me and Jazzy are connected, as in the name Soul to Soul, and the spirit part has to be connected for it to work. Soul to Soul pulled us together, but I resisted them for 17 years until around 2007, when my manager insisted we should get back together. She personally missed mine and Jazzy's twin connection. In July 2009, Karen Wheeler not only performed at the Lovers Rock Gala Awards, but she also received a Lifetime Achievement Award. Following the Soul to Soul reunion tour in 2010, Karen Wheeler briefly departed from the group. In the same year, Karen performed the Soul to Soul classic, Back to Life, live at Fat Beats in New York. What is going on? In 2012, Karen Wheeler was present when the Soul to Soul received the Honorary PRS Heritage Plaque Award at Electric in Brixton. However, in her interview with the Soul Survivors magazine a few days after the award, Karen Wheeler said this, Getting the plaque at Electric in Brixton the other day was kind of surreal and I was kind of puzzled. At one point, I saw a picture that somebody posted of me looking puzzled. I was probably thinking, why now? A quarter of a century later, when everyone else got theirs at the time of their hit making moment, we get ours. Carrie Wheeler then eventually returned to Soul to Soul. As mentioned in my Soul to Soul video, in 2016, Soul to Soul released the single A New Day, featuring Louis Vega, which is credited to Karen Wheeler and Jazzy B. And in the same year, the group released a live album titled Origins, The Roots of Soul to Soul. In 2017, Karen Wheeler made an appearance on her former Soul to Soul bandmate, Simon Law, on the single Morning Love, which was the lead single from his album, Look to the Sky. In November 2018, Soul Jazz Records released the first ever collection of the pioneering British reggae lovers rock group, Brown Sugar. The collection includes rare singles, dubs and extended mixes and is available on music streaming platforms such as Spotify. Harry Wheeler is still performing with Soul to Soul. In January 2021, Soul to Soul performed live in concert. At the time of recording this video, Soul to Soul with Karen Wheeler are currently on tour in and around the UK throughout the year of 2022. Karen posted sporadically on Facebook until January 2021. She has not been active on Twitter since December 2013 and I couldn't find an Instagram account for Karen but it seems as if she's doing well. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you've all enjoyed. For those of you who made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe and comment down below. Also let me know if you learned anything new in this video. And I'll see you all in my next one, over and out.